Welcome to the podcast of Strat Build. I'm going to start out by working on the neck. I'm going to take it from this to this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the headstock shape. This is a paddle headstock and I want to make my own shape. For that, I'm going to use this routing template. And how do you get a routing template like this? Well, you make it yourself and it's actually pretty fun to do. Maybe you can use a tool like this for the curves. Then you just experiment until you get a shape that you like. Then you just cut the shape out with the jigsaw, but a little outside the line so that you can shape it and fine tune it with a rasp like this and maybe with sandpaper until you have the shape that you really like. I really like this one. And then you have a template that you can use again and again for all the guitars you're going to build. Oh and before I start working on the neck I'm going to put this body into the freezer so I want to crack the nitro just to see what happens. First of all 24 hours maybe 48 hours. So now let's cut out the headstock shape. So now I have the line and I can cut it out roughly with the jigsaw. And to avoid making marks in the wood, I'm going to put some blue tape on there. To cut the curves, I'm using a thin jigsaw blade like this. Cut roughly outside the line just to take off material so I don't have to take it off with the router. I just want to get it over with so I can sand the edges right here. Let's route. <laughs> I'm going to use any router bit with the bearing on top. I could use this one, I could use this one, I can use this one. I'm going for this one, it's pretty new. I'm still very sharp. Okay, I'm getting ready to route and the secret with routing in my experience is don't go too fast, it will burn the wood. Just remove a little material at a time, take your time, it will be more smooth. I said in my first video that I wouldn't make any mistakes. Well, I made a mistake right here. It's because the template is an order of a millimeter too far in. I can sand that off. I can make that work, I think. this neck from guitaranatomy.com and if you want to buy anything from their website you can get a 10% discount by using the discount code LAYASTEKYT just so you know. <laughs> take off the edges a little bit, they're very sharp. So far so good. The headstock shape is done almost without mistakes. Almost. I need a router table but I don't have the space for it. Anyways, now it's time to give it the first coat of boiled linseed oil. I've done that with all the necks. This is uh, roasted maple and it looks very nice with boiled linseed oil on there. The easiest finish you will ever give a guitar neck. You just put it on a rack and you just smear it over the neck and let it dry. Give it three coats, wait a day between each coat and then sand with 2000 grit sandpaper or 3000 grit afterwards and you're done. So let's give it some linseed oil and let it dry.
What a nice color, just roasted maple with this nice warm color, super nice. And I'm just going with the dry side of the rack to take any excess oil off. All right, so that's it. I made the headstock shape. I gave it the first coat of boiled linseed oil. Now it just has to dry for a few days. The body with nitrocellulose is in the freezer. There's nothing more I can do right now. I'll be back in a few days for me, seconds for you. All right, so 46 hours have passed and the neck is doing fine. It's nice and dry and I'm ready to give it the second coat of boiled linseed oil. <laughs> That's it, the second coat is done, but I can't help thinking about the guitar body that I put in the freezer. Should we just take a look? All right, let's just have a look. Did it do anything, any cracking? Let me just bring you in closer. I have to say it doesn't look like it. Do you see any cracking? I don't, really. No cracking of the nitro? as far as I can tell. I think the temperature changes is what does the trick. So right now I'm going to put it out in the sun and then back in the freezer. So how about I put it right here in the sun and let it warm up. All right, so another 22 hours have passed and the neck is now nice and dry and I'm ready to give it the third and last coat of boiled linseed oil. Right, so that's it for boiled linseed oil. It has three coats on there, it's time to dry. Four days have passed and the neck is now nice and dry and it's very, very smooth, but I'm going to give it a little sanding uh, nevertheless. I'm using 3000 grit sandpaper and as a lubricant, I'm using mineral spirits with a little boiled linseed oil in there. Let's do it. <music> It. it took about two minutes. It's so super smooth now. Very nice to touch. The next step is painting the headstock. For that I have to tape it up and it's actually a little challenging to tape this part, the curved part right here, but let's see what I can do. It's not perfect at all, but I'm going to paint. And what I'm going to paint, I'm going to paint Olympic white. Uh, I got this from Nitolac. I asked them to if they would like to give it to me and they said yes. So uh, here we go, a thin layer of white. And after that, I'm going to give it this gloss, golden age gloss spray. This is a clear, nitrocellulose that is supposed to crack very easily to look old so i'm going with that trying that and i can report about the body in the freezer it hasn't cracked at all has been in, in there for a week has been out in the sun and back in i even put it in the oven didn't matter at all of course not very hot only 40 50 degrees celsius and then back in the freezer hasn't done anything isn't cracked at all so if you don't want your body to crack buy that one we'll get back to that in a later video now it's time to paint the headstock I think I'll just let it dry a little now. I don't want to get any bubbles in there, so a thin layer should be good. Okay, it has been drying now for a few minutes and I'm going to give it a few passes more.
third pass. So it's super rainy today and a lot of moisture in the air and that's not good when you're painting with nitrocellulose. So now a few hours have passed and it actually looks pretty good. I'm too impatient to not give it a coat more of white before I stop for today. And that's it. And now it just has to dry in here and I will get back to it tomorrow or maybe the day after. So another 24 hours have passed by and the headstock is nice and white. It's uh, dry also. It's time to put on the logo. The most tricky part is this hole right here. straight on maybe could have moved it a little that way that's it i put on the logo if you're looking for someone to show you how to do it perfectly this is not that channel this is the channel where you see an amateur do all the mistakes that you should avoid but i think i did it this time it's always the question is the logo straight what do you think yeah okay i'm actually moving it i couldn't live with it Now I have to make it stick again without destroying it or moving it too much again. Yeah. Is it straight? I think so. Okay, I actually moved it a little bit. I couldn't help myself. I can't never help myself. It's not perfect, nothing ever is. I think it's almost straight. So now it's time to put on a finish. I'm going to put layer after layer over the logo and then I'm going to sand it down so the logo becomes a part of the nitro finish. You actually can see that on some Fender guitars, but I like when you can't see that. I'm outside again and I'm ready to try this Golden Age Gloss Spray. <clears throat> Really? Really? You gotta be kidding me, man. That was super bad. Man, I'm going to paint it over. So another few hours have passed by and I'm ready to uh, sand the surface to get it totally level so you can't see the edges of the water slide detail. Really, am I going too deep now? So now the decal is level with the finish and I can concentrate on putting the final glossy glow over Of course, nothing is meant to be easy, uh, so the final coat, I don't know if you can see it, made some bubbles in the finish right here. I have to sand that and give it a second coat on top of that. I'm giving it one more and last coat. So the edge of the decal is still pretty visible and that's a little annoying. Also, I still have the bubbles. So right now I'm going to stop. I can feel that I'm getting impatient and I know when that happens, I'm going to destroy it and not benefit it. 
It's amazing how unbelievably stupid I am. I ruined the whole thing because I was impatient once again. Look at that. I took some sandpaper and I tried to sand it before it was dry enough. So what happened was that a little of the the finish got into the sandpaper and actually just ripped through deeply through the finish and ruined the number three. Okay, I'm doing it all over again. Seems like I have to do things twice. days have passed once again. I messed up again. Today hasn't been a great day. I've basically only corrected my own mistakes, so I'm going to stop. But of course, I could give it one last clear coat that can't hurt. No. Did I just spray white over the logo? Oops. So that's it. I think I solved the problem. What a roller coaster with ups and absolute downs. I'm not touching this headstock anymore with sandpaper or lacquer. I will polish it right now. Don't forget everything I just said. I don't think the orange peel is going away with polishing. I think I need to go in there with 5,000 grit sandpaper. I think the orange peel is gone. Now I just need to remove the scratches from the same table. Mm, I could polish more. I don't think I will. All right, that's it. Let me just film it with my phone to let you see all the mistakes. Right here, this stuff right there. But you know what? I'm not doing anything about that. All right, so now it's time to pull off the tape and see how bad it is. I know there's color in there and I have to fix that, but uh, that's part of the fun. Let's do it.
All right, I'm ready to crack some nitro. The freezer thing didn't work. So now I'm using this canned air. And if you hold them upside down, it freezes. And let's see if I can crack this nitro. This is supposed to crack very easily, but I have a thick layer on there to cover the logo, but let's try it out. What? Okay, cracks, but it just blows it out of, what? Did I just ruin <laughs> You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> this is the worst. This is absolutely the worst. So it destroyed the logo, but did it crack the nitro over here? I don't know. Okay, I'm getting a lot of experience here, destroying the logo again and again and again. Maybe there are tiny cracks, but they're very tiny. I don't know, should I work a little over here just to see if I can crack it more? Okay, so that's the result after 10 minutes of work. I just ruined it, but I think maybe it's time to get creative. Maybe I can use this somehow. Could I color this in in many bright colors or something like that? Be a true artist. Okay, so now that I've messed it up, why not just go all the way and try this Nitolag Relic Patina? Let's just see what happens. <laughs> oh man, this is crazy. If I put it on there, what happens? This is absolutely out of control. This is not bad. Okay, it works. Uh, Nitro lag relic patina and the golden age gloss. It works. I really, I couldn't see that before. What should I do about the logo? Well, I think nothing. I actually think I will let it stay like this and then let's see what I can come up with for the body. Let's go all the way now. No reason to hold back. The headstock. I just want to mention my verdict on the two Nitrolac products, the Golden Age Gloss and the Relic Patina. You saw it, it actually works. Uh, at first I couldn't see the cracks in the Nitro, but when I put on this Relic Patina, it was obvious there's a lot of cracks in there. It has some personality, it worked. Okay, now it's time to put on the tuning machine. So the tuners are in and that's very fast and easy to do. Now is the difficult thing and that's to get them all to be straight. So I just thought of that it mm, could be helpful to have an edge like this, put it up against the mach tuning machines and then you can adjust them to be straight like this. I think it helps. So my wife tells me that it's straight and I trust that. So it's time to put in the screws. I have had some problems before with putting in the screws. If you've seen some of my earlier videos, I actually didn't drill deep enough for the screw and it ended up cracking the nitro. Anyways, I wanna do it right. So right now I'm going to test out this bit right here. I think this is good. Okay, so now it's time to put in the screws and not make any mistakes. And 
that's it. Should I do something about the chrome and the shininess and the newness of it? I don't know. We'll get to that. All right, so that's it. The neck is done, the headstock is done, and it's telling a story. It's rough and I like it very much. Now the challenge is to make the rest of the guitar match this headstock. I have no idea how to do that. This body right here is super clean and there's not a single scratch or a single crack in the nitro. So I'm going to work on the body right now. If you want to see that, be sure to subscribe to this channel. Hit the like button if you like this content and let's get on with the body.